Next on Currents News, the Pope offers prayers and sends a message to those suffering after a deadly earthquake in Albania. I'm Tim Hartman in Jamaica Estates, Queens, where hundreds of Catholic school students are making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with love. And it's all for a good cause. That's coming up. Two young boys bringing a smile to the face of hospital patients with these plants. I'm Emily Drubian. That's ahead. Plus, talking politics at Thanksgiving, how to navigate the dinner table conversation and keep the peace. Currents News starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Ray Ray Mundi. Pope Francis is back at the Vatican after his whirlwind tour of Thailand and Japan. Tonight, the Pope is reflecting on his journey and echoing his strong stance on the death penalty and nuclear weapons. Melissa Butts has a wrap up of the pontiff's journey back to Rome. Pope Francis concluded his 32nd apostolic trip of his pontificate by speaking to journalists aboard the lengthy flight on his way back to Rome. Many of the highlights included the arms trade, nuclear weapons, and the death penalty. After a week in Thailand and Japan, Pope Francis had much to say reflecting on his trip. He explained the death penalty all the way to possession of nuclear arms is immoral. La pena di morte que está claramente eh, en detta que no es moral y no se puede hacer, ¿no? Eh, creo que esto va unido a, a una conciencia. Likewise, he called out Christian countries who live in hypocrisy, those who talk peace but participate in the arms trade to benefit their economy. Ma tutto quello che si faccia per fermare la produzione delle armi e per eh, fermare le guerre e per andare al negoziato e anche con l'aiuto de dei facilitatori, dei de aiutatori, questo si deve fare sempre, sempre, no? E, e dà dei risultati. The Pope said his time at the Hiroshima Peace Memorial especially moved him. Ho ribadito che l'uso delle armi nucleari è immorale. Questo deve andare al catechismo della Chiesa Cattolica. E non solo l'uso. Anche il possesso. Pope Francis was also asked aboard the papal plane if he would write an encyclical on peace and nonviolence. He chuckled, saying that although he would truly like to, it will probably be a job for the next pope due to the amount of time and dedication it will take. At the Vatican, Melissa Butts, Currents News. Pope Francis took the time today to pray for the victims of Albania's devastating 6.4 magnitude earthquake. Albania is the primo paese d'Europa che ho voluto visitare. Io sono vicino alle vittime. More than 25 people have been killed and some 700 injured. Rescuers are still digging through the rubble in search of survivors. The Holy Father said he wants the Lord to bless Albania, a country he loves so much. Now to Jamaica Estates, where students from Immaculate Conception Catholic Academy are hard at work leading up to the holiday, helping to feed the homeless. Currents News' Tim Harfman has their story. Assembly lines of Catholic Academy students spreading kindness before Thanksgiving. Fifth grader Raniel Pasawa and his classmates are making sandwiches for the less fortunate. They cannot afford food and we want to help them out. They're homeless, so we need to give them a little gift. Their gifts made with love. Immaculate Conception Catholic Academy and Jamaica Estates Queens teaming up with one sandwich at a time. The nonprofit feeds thousands of people in need by handing out peanut butter and jelly or sunflower based butter sandwiches. They actually love it because it doesn't spoil. They can put it in their backpack, eat it when they're hungry later in the day. Um, it's also soft. And people don't realize that the homeless population 
very often don't have the best of teeth and it's hard for them to chew. These students are making over a thousand of them. And these sandwiches will be distributed to three different shelters throughout the five boroughs. Students say their desire to help others along with their Catholic education goes together like a good old fashioned PB&J sandwich. Well, they tell us a lot about stuff like this in religion where how you should help people like this who don't have as much as you. A kind gesture made from little hands with big hearts. In Jamaica Estates, Queens, Tim Harfman, Currents News. All right, President Donald Trump is spending Thanksgiving in his new official home state, Florida. Marine One touchdown in Palm Beach last night. The first family will spend the long weekend at Mar-a-Lago. After landing, the president attended a Keep America Great rally where he spoke about the politics behind the holiday. You know, some people want to change the name Thanksgiving. They don't want to use the term Thanksgiving. And that was true also with Christmas, but now everybody's using Christmas again. Remember I said that? But now we're going to have to do a little work on Thanksgiving. People have different ideas why it shouldn't be called Thanksgiving. But everybody in this room I know loves the name Thanksgiving and we're not changing it. Trump went on to say it's the quote radical left that wants to change the name game. The president also announced that he plans to designate Mexican cartels as terror groups. The move would allow the U.S. to take action against the drug dealers. But Mexico's foreign minister is saying his country will not allow any, quote, violation of national sovereignty. Pay up, it's the message issued to former Bishop Michael Bransfield by the Charleston, West Virginia Diocese. Bransfield has been ordered to pay nearly $800,000 in restitution for his alleged misuse of diocese funds. The ousted bishop is accused of embezzling church funds to use for luxury hotels and even alcohol purchases. We've reached out to Bransfield's lawyer for comment, but have not yet heard back. To Texas now, at least three people were injured in an explosion at a chemical plant that sent a huge fireball right into the sky, triggering evacuations. Currents News' Jessica East Hope is here now with the very latest. Jessica, that video was incredible, huh? Ray, it happened in Port Neches, which is about 90 miles east of Houston. The blast could be felt for miles, prompting authorities to evacuate the surrounding area. It's like the whole house was shaken. Kind of like a little mini earthquake. Authorities say the explosion at a chemical plant in Port Natchez, Texas, has caused extensive damage throughout the small town. The force blew the blinds up enough when I was laying down. It, I could see the fireball outside. People who live nearby say it sounded like a bomb. We were sound asleep and this tremendous boom hit and the whole house shook. At approximately 1 a.m. local time, there was an explosion involving a processing unit at the TPC Group plant in Port Natchez. Three people who were working at the plant were injured when the blast occurred and were treated and released from local hospitals. The company issued a statement saying, quote, emergency responders are still working to bring the event under control and are doing so as quickly and safely as possible. Teams have been dispatched to conduct air monitoring along the fence line of the facility and in surrounding neighborhoods. We're also trying to minimize impacts to the community as well as the environment. And authorities say there are health concerns. The chemical that is currently burning butadiene can cause irritation to the eyes, nose and lungs at acute low levels of exposure. Increased exposure could cause damage to the central nervous system. There is a mandatory evacuation to the area immediately surrounding the plant and fire officials say they could expand that if necessary. This could have been a major disaster ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday. Thankfully, the injuries were minimal. Now it's just a matter of getting that chemical butadiene, which is made from processing petroleum, under control. Hopefully that's done by officials sooner than later. Jessica, thank you so much for those updates. Thank you, Ray. All right, Wednesday, it's the busiest travel day of the year, and airlines, trains, and highways are at a standstill across the country. Widespread storms across the Midwest and Northwest are making Thanksgiving travel difficult or near impossible tonight as 55 million people try to get out of Dodge. Minnesota is blanketed in heavy snow. A bomb cyclone is pummeling the Northwest with hurricane force winds and parades are in danger right here in the Northeast. 
high winds could ground the annual Macy's Parade balloons. There's a lot more news headed straight your way, including how a young boy is inspired to help others after visiting his sick grandmother in the hospital, and then keeping the peace at the holiday dinner table, the do's and don'ts. And later, as we take time to reflect on what we're thankful for, Bishop Damasio shares his thoughts for this Thanksgiving. Stay with us. We'll be right back. During this season of giving, a young boy from the Bronx is leading by example, showing how a simple gesture can make a very big impact on the lives of people in need. Currents News, Emily Druby with the inspirational story from Calvary Hospital. Good morning. Good morning. Sebastian. Once a month, Sebastian puts a smile on hospital patients' faces, giving back by gifting them Venus fly traps. I feel good because I'm making smiles on the patients' faces. A gesture born from love and loss. They actually didn't give her too long to, to live, about 72 hours. Last September, Sebastian's grandmother was a patient here at Calvary Hospital. He noticed she was sleeping with her mouth open. Terrified she would swallow a bug, he thought of a solution, a Venus flytrap. So he brought one to the hospital. The gesture spread and others began asking for the plants. It was just amazing how it evolved into kind of a mission. A mission Sebastian and his brother Lucas continued after their grandmother's passing. Lynn Sharing dedicated her life to helping others. She founded Lamp Catholic Ministries in the Bronx along with her husband, helping the poorest of the poor, instilling that Catholic teaching of loving thy neighbor in her grandchildren. Now they're carrying on her legacy. What do you think she would say if she could see what your two boys are doing? I don't even think she would have birds. Handing out about 150 plants so far, paying for them through donations collected through their GoFundMe page, a child's way to bring smiles to the dying and through fundraisers. I get to see other people have joy. 150 plants, 150 okay, smiles, so day, and 150 little times little they've honored okay. their grandma. She's looking down at you. In the Bronx, Emily Druby, Currents News. Tomorrow, friends and family will get together to break bread and count their blessings as the nation celebrates Thanksgiving. Currents News' Tamara Lane spoke to two spiritual leaders about bridging the possible divide bound to happen at the dinner table. Monsignor Guy Massey, pastor of Sacred Hearts at St. Stephen's Church in Brooklyn, and his friend Rabbi Brad Hirschfield, the president of the National Jewish Center for Learning and Leadership. Right now, there seems to be so much that's dividing us politics, impeachment, even talking about the weather can bring up debate about climate change. What should people be talking about when they sit down at the dinner table? Monsignor. I think it, I think all those things are true, but I also think gathering people in, there must be something positive that we could talk about. If you want to talk, talk about why we're gathering here, we still have a very great nation. We have a great uh, foundation. And so as a result, maybe we should talk about where our lives are besides what's going on around us. So where are we in, in this idea of Thanksgiving? What are you thankful for? Rabbi? So I love that. I actually want to talk about all the things you mentioned that are often divisive because that's the only way it's going to get better. Avoidance may be a place to start, but it's not a place right. to end. The very things we've been told don't talk about, politics, religion, those are the things we have to yeah, talk about if we want them not to be so divisive. The real work is learning how do we talk about them. So invite someone over, and yes, ask, but if you ask a question, be genuinely curious about the person's answer. So a lot of talking this Thanksgiving, but also a lot of listening, is what you're I, saying. I think these topics are going to come up, because you're not going to get away with a, a Thanksgiving without I mean, you can dance on. around it, but why? It but just no, makes things worse. The idea is, could we respect the person to whom we are speaking or be asking questions of, 
And can we learn from the person without getting so emotionally involved in this or saying or, or having their answer think that this is a personal attack on us? Let's, you know? let's turn now to the meaning of the holiday. So the holiday is meant to be thankful to God for his blessings. Do you think that's been lost a little bit? So Rabbi? I, I'm hesitating because I know that right now, the fastest growing group of people in this country when it talks about their spiritual identities are the nuns. Right. And I don't mean the Catholic religious women. No, right. I mean N-O-N-E-S, the people oh. who feel, they'll tell you, deeply spiritual. They don't feel connected religiously. Actually, God, faith in God is not going down in this country, though institutions is, which means I think people are ready to be grateful to God. If the God they're allowed to imagine being grateful to is one that comes from inside of their perception and conscience first, not from the conscience in view of the religious teacher who's asking them the question. Monsignor, do you have something to add? I think that that is true. I think many people do believe in God. They may not be going to Mass or things like this or whatever church or synagogue they're, they're not going to. But I think yes, and I think um, they probably are grateful for where they are. And even if they're not, maybe there are some people who are just humanitarians. Right. Well, we can be thankful for each other, you know. Right. And so there, there are many ways to approach this at that very diverse table in the same family where we all grew up together and having very different experiences. Speaking about approach, how do families that maybe have deep divisions approach Thanksgiving? How can we use the day in order to promote healing? I think you're, you're sharing the same meal. You're in, engaging in a conversation. And it does, it's not a matter of saying you agree with or disagree with. It's a matter of saying you are here, let's enjoy you today. Let's enjoy each other today. And I think that has a way of planting seeds of maybe ongoing conversation and ongoing acceptance. So right. three quick strategies. Number one, not everything can be healed over turkey and stuffing. No. Right? We may have differences of opinion. They may be deep. We may have had arguments that hurt one another. But there are cases where people have assaulted each other in families and worse. I'm not going to be the one to say to someone, somehow you're spiritually defective or you don't understand Thanksgiving right. because you won't bring your attacker to share a turkey leg with you. So I think there are limits to how much can be healed at any one moment. That's number one. Number two, you can bring someone to your table, but not to sit next to you, <laughs> right? Yes. I always tell you, if your table only includes people who agree with you, you need a bigger table. Yes. And it's okay to say that one far down at the end of the table, because <laughs> I don't want to hear from them. I'm not ready to hear from them, that's right. but I'm also not ready to exclude them from my home. And that's an important zone. I don't want to deal with you, but you are my family, and you have a seat at this table. Monsignor Guy Massey, pastor of Sacred Hearts, St. Stephen Church in Brooklyn, and Rabbi Brad Hirschfield, the president of the National Jewish Center for Learning and Leadership. Thank you both for being with us, and happy holidays. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Our thanks to the Monsignor and the Rabbi for their thoughtful advice. Still to come here on Currents News, as we look forward to breaking bread with friends and family, Bishop DiMarzio shares his thoughts on the importance of gratitude this Thanksgiving. Plus, is it costing you more this year to serve up a delicious holiday dinner? The answer is next. Here's something to chew on ahead of that big meal tomorrow night. The average price of a Thanksgiving dinner is up this year, but only by a penny. The American Farm Bureau checks out the price of all the traditional trimmings every year. They say the average cost this time around for a table of 10 is $48.91. That's roughly $5 per person. Finally tonight, before we say goodbye ahead of Thanksgiving Day, a special word from the Bishop of Brooklyn, Nicholas DiMarzio. He is with Ed Wilkinson to discuss his plans for the holiday and what we can be thankful for. Ed. Thank you, Bishop DiMarzio is with us here on this Thanksgiving Day weekend. Bishop, happy Thanksgiving to you. Good to be here. Uh, it's been a tough year for some of us, and uh, you know, maybe people will be asking, what do we got to be thankful for this year? What do we have to be thankful for? Well, first of all, that you're alive. Uh, I think that's important. <coughs> Life is the greatest gift God gives us, so we always have to be thankful for that. 
And the circumstances of life, sometimes are, there's ups and downs, so there's good days and bad days, good years and bad years. This was a difficult one as we're dealing with the sex abuse crisis. It's still unfolding. Uh, that makes it difficult uh, times at times. Uh, accusations are difficult to deal with. A lot of di difficulties, but at the same time, we recognize that the church is uh, our home. It is the place where we, we encounter God and the liturgy, especially in one another. So that's something to be thankful for. Yeah. You know, families get together at this time of the year, and uh, sometimes they have to force themselves to be nice to each other. <laughs> there's, there's always, you know, sometimes you have to watch what you say over the table. I think. What would you say to families about uh, what's the best way to get along with one another over the holidays? Well, I think they should count their blessings, you know, talk to one another about what they feel has gone well during the year, what they're thankful for. There's got to be something you're thankful for. That avoids all the political situations and sometimes religious issues that can be uh, meddlesome and uh, difficult to resolve. But I think uh, when you're coming, when it, uh, you know, it's a place of, uh, of, uh, of celebration, which Thanksgiving is, it, it, we have to really do uh, be thankful and understand the beginning. My, the one, my one uh, niece-in-law does a great job. She has costumes for all the kids and they, and they portray the first uh, Thanksgiving Indian costumes and pilgrim <laughs> costumes. And some of them are getting older now. I don't think they like it too much, but they all do it because the little kids <laughs> really like it. And uh, that gives, sets a tone, you know, that usually right in between courses, we have the little play goes on. Mm -hmm. So that, that really makes it nice. <clears throat> but th we have to understand the, the origin of this great American invention of Thanksgiving and uh, how we be to be thankful every day. Yeah. <clears throat> this is about the closest we come to having a secular day that's really a, a religious day, isn't it? You know, we combine uh, a prayer and we give thanks to God for who we are. Uh, is that difficult for us as a nation where we try to keep church and state separate? Well, I think we don't try to keep it separate. The, the, some of the people in the culture do. So this, uh, most people think it's a holy day of obligation almost. That's and people, right. a lot of people do go to Mass the night before, especially during the day. Is not as, as, as uh, attended, but uh, certainly the visual mass on Thanksgiving. I'm going to do one this year, uh, and uh, you know, two, three hundred people there that want to give thanks to God in the Eucharist, which is the greatest uh, act of Thanksgiving we can have. Mm -hmm. Do you think that maybe the impeachment process might not be a topic for discussion over the Thanksgiving? Uh, <laughs> I don't know if people are really engaged in it. I mean, the, the papers are, but yeah. I haven't heard that much people following it. I don't know that that, that mm. interesting. Yeah. yeah. At the holidays also some people get the blues, you know, they get a little depressed and maybe they feel they should be happy and maybe they don't feel as happy as they think they should feel. What do you think is the best antidote yeah, for it's, these? It is a phenomenon that happens, but I guess you have to engage in the in what's happening in Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. I mean, uh, look at the positive side of what these uh, celebrations are about. And sometimes there's psychological issues, there's family issues, things that can depress people. But uh, this is a time where we can overcome them by engaging in what we're about. Mm -hmm. uh, how about yourself? Uh, you plan, I guess, on spending some time with your family? You, you told us already sure. about your niece-in-law. Yeah, 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 we usually, we're, we're, we're together with the family uh, for Thanksgiving and Christmas. They usually get together. And uh, after Christmas, I usually have a a party when I invite uh, people I don't see all the time. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a nice uh, gathering at that time too. Now I know you like to cook and that uh, you have an Italian specialty. Uh, is, is there a, something that's special uh, to the uh, Italian table at Thanksgiving? Well, they usually it's, it's either lasagna or ravioli. This year I'm off the lasagna uh, trail, <laughs> but uh, they'll be doing something else. Mm -hmm. But there is turkey, right? Oh, you know, yeah, there is turkey, of course. Just to add a little, a little pasta bit to the before, turkey. you know. Okay. Bishop, All thanks right. so much, and have a great Thanksgiving and the rest of the holiday season. Okay. okay. And now, back to the news desk. Thank you, Ed, and thanks to Bishop DiMarzio as well. That's all for this edition of Currents News. I'm Ray Mundy. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Have a happy Thanksgiving, and I hope to see you again next time. Mm -hmm.